Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy, Tristan Barrickser, the digital storyteller, and I am really excited about this new video uh, because it's all about uh, this new product that I'm that I'm using that I've been testing out for the last few months, and the new product is called Phantom Lutz. Now, Phantom Lutz is created by a filmmaker, director, cinematographer by the name of Joel Famolero. Um, now, Joel is a an amazing creative um we are actually a part of a facebook group and that's where we initially met and um he's been making some amazing uh luts for the past few years and he's a fs5 user i'm a fs5 user and we're in a group together and i just kept on seeing this dude post some amazing shots from the fs5 and i was just like man like i want I want that type of look. How do I get that type of look? And uh, I, I start to see this guy popping up every time when these amazing images were coming up in the group. So I reached out to him a few months ago just to kind of talk to him about a few different ideas um, with regards to having a conversation with him. And then he shared with me about his Phantom Lutz and how he developed them. So I decided to try them out and he actually gifted them to me because at the time I was looking for uh, a way to find some LUTs or find some some filters that would help me with people of color, um, people with darker skin like myself. And, you know, I, I work with a lot of people that um, have darker skin tones, people of color, and it's really hard to find great filters, great LUTs, uh, great color um, tools that will actually speak to um, people with darker shade skin. And um, that's why I've been kind of working and developing to try and create some LUTs and some, some other tools that would help out the filmmaker like myself who works with a lot of people of color. Um, a lot of times as, as a colorist or as a director, filmmaker, you don't necessarily have the time to be constantly going um, back and forth through the color correction process. It's really important to be able to have a quick turnaround time, to have happy clients, and at the same time, to be able to have a tool or tools that will render out consistent imagery. So let's go into Final Cut. And I'll show you a little bit about how we can use these phantom LUTs in different ways. So I'm in Final Cut right now, and I have a few things open. I got a, a few different clips. And before we jump right into the different clips that I have, the one thing or two things that kind of stood out to me when Joel was kind of sharing with me about the LUTs was, number one, they're designed with the user or the filmmaker in mind, meaning he designed these LUTs specifically for the Sony sort of family of, of systems and family of cameras. So for the FS5, FS7, for the A7, um, Mark III and Mark IIs and um, A7S line of cameras. And the reason why that's important is because a lot of times... Uh, people will use these cameras and just use the default functionality or we'll start from scratch in terms of color correction. And, and it can be, if you don't know what you're doing, especially with the Sony cameras, they can be a nightmare to grade. And the secondly, the other thing that stands out to me about what Joel was talking about when he was talking about the Phantom LUTs was the fact that um, we should be seeing even sort of roll off in both the highlights and the shadows. And the reason why this is important is because the highlights and the shadows and the way they roll off really are a big factor on that sort of cinematic filmic look. And if you're going for that cinematic look, it's all about how natural the highlights and the shadows roll off. So let's jump right into this. I have a clip of some flowers that my friend um, Le Paris uh, from Brooklyn Blooms uh, made up and created. She's a florist, lives in Brooklyn. And um, I'm going to add, I'm going to go to my filters tab really quickly. I am going to go to LUTs. I'm just going to drag a LUT right on here. 
And then I'm going to go to my LUTs area. And I'm going to go to the Phantom RE LUTs uh, PP7 LUTs. Now, for those of you that don't really know what PP7 means, it stands for Picture Profile 7. That's the picture profile I use religiously. It's my favorite picture profile. It's the one that it has S log. But right now, for the sake of time, I just want to kind of showcase to you um, the different options we have. So we have uh, neutral, tungsten, we have ice blue, we have green eyes, and we have um, utopia. So those are the f what one, two, three, four, five different LUTs that come in this particular pack. So I'm just going to click on uh, this neutral one and voila we have the clip and one of the things i want you to notice right away is how soft the blacks are the shadows aren't aren't totally beat up uh, which i love and i and i've i've told joel this that it's really nice that that he's able to do that um and and the other thing is if i zoom in i'm going to just zoom in to i don't know 200% um as i play this i'm going to play this back again the noise Right in the shadows, in my opinion, look a lot more natural than if I was to do it myself or if I was to crush the blacks myself. So somehow he has some sort of you know secret sauce in these LUTs that make it a lot more cinematic, that, that make the quality of your video footage a lot more cinematic. The other thing that, that he, he said and he mentioned, and, and I thought this was kind of cool, is that once you you find out or you figure out what picture profile you want to use based upon you know the LUT that you want to go with you can just expose however you want um obviously if you want to overexpose or underexpose you can do that and this LUT will work pretty much exactly the same and you don't want to have to worry so much about oh in post i i have to expose this way because in post it's going to be harder for me to color correct blase 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 with these LUTs, it really allows you and frees you up to expose exactly how you want to expose. And then the LUT will really react uh, based upon, you know, obviously using S-Log. I, I just love the fact that it's simple and you can make some tweaks on it. So, for instance, I brought in a, a clip of of my homegirl, La Paris, and she's doing up these flowers really, really cool. So if I just copy and paste this neutral LUT right onto this clip. It looks good. It looks really, really good already. And it has this filmic look. And I love that. And I love the filmic look. The only thing that I feel that needs a little tweaking for me with the LUT is when it comes to, you know, darker skin tones, it's a little bit too red. So what, I, what I'm going to do really quickly is all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go uh, to my inspector window, I'm going to go under hue saturation curves, and I am actually going to select the Paris's skin tone, this sort of ruby red here, and I'm actually going to just go down a bit and tweak it, and that's it, and that's literally all I have to do. And now I, you know, I feel like this is much better. It's a little bit more natural in terms of the skin tones. I love it. I think it's great. Let's jump on to, and this is all A7 Mark III uh, footage, just for your, your, um, just for your knowledge. So I'm going to take this clip of my friend Andrew and put it down. I'm going to take a little clip of my friend Brody, and then I'm also going to take a clip of my wife eating this mango. And these are all shot on the FS, the FS uh, five. Andrew, I am going to copy from the very first clip, which is just has the LUT already preset on there. I'm going to throw it on. Now, as you can see, this is a little bit turquoise, turquoise-y, which is not the best. So I'm just going to go um, to hue and saturation curves. And I'm going to select the white here. It's going to select the hue and saturation. I'm just going to drag it down. And I think that I could even use, I can drag down even more. 
there we go and then it's still kind of like in my opinion a little too desaturated or not warm enough so i'm going to go to the color board and i'm just going to take this gray shadow area and i'm just going to warm it up just slightly not too much just just enough there you go right and now let's see this here perfect now it's not perfect i'll probably do a little bit more tweaking so there's a little bit less green but again this took me like 10 15 seconds i just did another tweak and now it's less green right now i'm actually going to copy and paste this color adjustment from andrew and i'm going to put it onto brody and see how it looks there we go we're right there and this is the other thing i really really like about this LUT. a lot of times with LUTs, they're they're super strong and you have to like mix them down or bring them down to 10 percent or five percent in order to actually utilize them with joel's LUTs, i have them right now i have all of them at 100 percent, and they work perfectly fine lastly i have this indoor shot where i was filming the roof because i really like this chandelier and um notice as i add the phantom LUTs to this darker background notice what happens with the details three two one the details are still there the shadows are still there the highlights are still there all we did was we just adjusted it by adding the uh, phantom filters again these phantom LUTs are really really good a really really great product they work really well and they save you time and that's the big thing for me they save me time a ton of time and they make my footage look even better than what i shot it if you'd like to learn more about joe familaro uh, you can go to his website at www.joefamilaro.com um, and then if you want to actually purchase or invest in these LUTs uh, he has all the information on his website and uh, this is really just more of an intro to the LUTs I hope you enjoyed this uh, quick video tutorial on the Phantom LUTs and sort of my initial impressions about it I'm definitely going to be doing more videos about these these LUTs because I think they are a tremendous tool um, they've been helping me already throughout uh, other personal projects as well as professional projects I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give me a thumbs up. Um, leave a comment below if you have any questions. And um, I hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're not a subscriber already. Until the next time, peace. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's your boy Tristan Barracks here, The Digital Storyteller. And I'm super excited that you took the time to watch one of my videos. I really appreciate it. If you don't mind liking, subscribing, and sharing um, my videos, I really appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Peace.